It's Rima Afternoons with Tom and Di. And once again, we have the opportunity to catch up with Jordan Scott, PR and communication specialist for Open Doors as the uh, new year gets uh, gets underway. Open Doors, of course, working with uh, Christians around the world in places where it's very hard to to, mm. to follow Jesus. And uh, as we kick off the new year, the other thing Open Doors are involved in is the World Watch List, which looks at the top 50 countries in the world where it's the hardest to follow Jesus. So Jordan, welcome back to the show and Happy New Year. It's great to have you with us. Oh, thanks so much, Tom and Di. It's great to start a new year with you guys talking about the global church. Mm, so let's talk about some of the things that we actually got to be involved with earlier this year. And that was uh, a, a Zoom meeting that you did with many people in the media talking about the World Watch List. Um, and I have to say, my eyes were open. I was uh, absolutely blown away by the extent of persecution of Christians in this world. So what I thought we could start with is what is the worldwide li list and uh, world watch list. I will get there eventually. And uh, how is it compiled? Yeah, so the world watch list is uh, an extensive body of research which measures on the ground experience, the experience of field coordinators and local partners, persecuted believers themselves. Uh, it measures um, uh, our World Watch researchers. They put in a lot of work into understanding the trends that are at play more widely, um, different uh, pol political uh, decisions that are made and just the rise and fall of uh, pressure and violence for Christians. And then all of that information gets put together and integrated into uh, a comprehensive list and that list measures um, how difficult it is for a Christian uh, to practice their faith in a country and so we measure it for a, a whole lot of different countries there's um, actually more than 50 countries on the list but when we uh, actually release the list we release the top 50 and the pressure and violence scores uh, that each of those countries face so North Korea uh, is at the top of that list. It's the most dangerous place in the world to follow Jesus. It's actually impossible to live openly as a Christian there. Uh, and followed by countries like Somalia, Libya, uh, and Eritrea, where it's uh, equally just as difficult and dangerous to be a Christian. So, I mean, you guys have been producing this for quite a while now. What are some of the trends that you've been noticing in terms of the global church as we head into 2024? Yeah, so the World Watch List really started as a tool for open doors so that we could understand uh, what kind of persecution was experienced where and how we could work because we work with persecuted Christians, not necessarily to relieve the persecution they face because we know that persecution is promised uh, and it is a part of following Jesus uh, in many places. So uh, when we're not here to end persecution or, or even avoid it in, in many cases. We're actually just here to support Christians who are enduring that persecution. So whether that's through um, uh, trauma care and counseling, whether that's through through therapy, whether that's through discipleship training and persecution preparedness training, through emergency relief, that's our goal. So that was why the World Watch List started in the first place. It was about trying to understand what persecution looks like around the world. And we've been doing it for 31 years. It's gotten more and more rigorous. Um, more and more people have gotten involved in it. For 21 of those 31 years, North Korea has been number one uh, on the list. So it's been number one for 21 years, uh, with only one year where it dipped back to number two and that wasn't because of a recline in uh, persecution for North Korean believers it's just that Afghanistan went to the top and that was in the 2021 world watch list mm -hmm. uh, but since then North Korea has been number one um, and so yeah that's a, a big trend that we've seen uh, that authoritarian nations like North Korea and even other authoritarian nations uh, like China uh, even um, you know parts of India uh, different nations where authoritarianism is growing we're seeing a, a massive restriction in religious freedom there as well uh, another trend that we're seeing is the the islamic extremist violence that's happening in sub-saharan africa it's the most violent place in the world to follow jesus uh, nigeria is number six on the world watch list this year the most violent nation to follow jesus and the political instability uh, across sub-saharan africa as a whole is just meaning that there's more and more violence faced by christians Another trend that we're seeing is that Christians are feeling less and less at home in the Middle East, uh, which if you think about it, it's the birthplace of 
Christianity. Uh, it's where Jesus was born, where he walked, where the disciples first went to. Um, you know, politically, it looks very different now, but uh, Christians that have lived in countries like Iraq, Syria, uh, even places in Iran um, and places in North Africa like uh, Algeria and uh, and uh, Morocco, these countries where there was a, quite an established church, we're seeing pressure and uh, and just the the squeeze of persecution, uh, encouraging um, uh, them to go and leave and find places where it's safer. So Christians are feeling less at home in the Middle East. Um, and then digital persecution and church closures in Asia uh, is another big trend that we're seeing. Um, China and India were the two largest contributors to our church attacks and closures. 10,000 churches were closed in China alone uh, in our reporting period for 2023. So that's that's a lot of information, but those are just some of the trends that we're seeing worldwide uh, that are increasing, that have led to, yeah, just the increase in persecution that we're seeing uh, across the globe. Well, yeah. um, as you say, there's a lot of information. There's a lot of uh, areas of the world uh, that, you know, have been highlighted in the world watch list. But just before we uh, close, you know, there's uh, one country that's on the list, which, are, you know, has all, also been in, in our news over the summer, and that's Yemen. So, you know, what can we do in terms of praying for uh, believers uh, in, in Yemen? Yeah, I mean, many of our listeners uh, have you know, come across Yemen maybe just recently um, through what's been going uh, on in the news and current events. Uh, it's kind of shone a bit of a spotlight on Yemen. Uh, but we've been watching Yemen for quite some time. It comes in at number five on the world watch list for this year. Uh, and we've been watching it for quite some time because the uh, the conflict that's been happening in Yemen uh, between the Yemeni government and the Houthis who um our listeners might be more aware of now who are backed by Iran, uh, that conflict has led to a, a, a wide scale humanitarian crisis where pretty much everyone in Yemen is suffering. Uh, and there's millions and millions of people this year who are going to need humanitarian uh, help and support because of what's going on in Yemen. So it's a very unstable nation and it's a very dangerous place to follow Jesus. And I actually uh, got to chat with one of our local partners uh, from Yemen and he was sharing that you actually can't reveal that you're a Christian at all in Yemen uh, you can't even have your identity uh, card say that you're a Christian um, you can't start a church you can't attend a church you can't get a birth certificate in Yemen which means that by law every Yemeni is a Muslim um, you can't get married if you're a Christian so Christians are really squeezed from every side um, it, it is the fifth most dangerous place in the world to follow Jesus. It was at number three last year, um, but because uh, other countries have uh, increased so much that, that it's actually been pushed back to the number five spot, even though persecution hasn't gotten any better for Christians mm. uh, in Yemen. It's really difficult to measure the uh, amount of violence that's happening in Yemen uh, because all, most Christians, if not all Christians, are secret Christians. So all the violence would happen behind closed doors. So uh, for all of our prayers who like to pray, we would love to invite you uh, to pray for Yemen, especially now that there's a bit of a spotlight on it right now, um, to pray that there's peace in Yemen, um, to pray uh, that the, the people who are leading Yemen and, and leading different parts of Yemen would come to Christ, um, and to just pray for the Yemeni church that it would continue to grow uh, despite the immense pressure that they face. Jordan, mm. I'm thinking that there'll be people today listening in thinking, I, I kind of want to get my hand on this world watch list. Uh, you know, I want to know what's going on. I'd love to pray for these countries where it really is so difficult to be a Christian. Are people able to access that now? Is it available for people to look at? Yeah, absolutely. If you head to opendoors.org.nz, uh, and then you'll be able to see our world watch list. You'll be able to see the full list. There's also a free world watch list report. You can go and download. You'll be able to see uh, some of the trends that I spoke about today. You'll be able to see the different pressure and violence scores that are there. Uh, and there'll be some ways to pray as well. So you can head mm. to the website. Jordan Scott, PR and communication specialist for Open Doors with us once again. And Jordan, uh, once again, appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. Great to be with you.
Thanks for joining us on Rima. Now, if you found value in today's content, hit that like button. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing to our channel with the subscribe button. This really helps us to continue to produce more quality content for you. And hey, if you'd like to stay updated and never miss any of our future videos, ring that notification bell as well. Don't forget to follow us on our other socials, which are in the description below. And until then, stay tuned.